Hello, 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 and welcome. Exactly. Uh, what do we say? It's uh, hello, good afternoon, good evening, good night, or good morning, depending on where in the world you are watching the show. I know. I know. How are we? Hi, team. Like that. Yes. Very good. Hello. So, uh, we've had another busy, crazy, crazy busy crazy. two weeks. Made even crazier because I dropped my earpiece before we started the show and it rolled into the desk. <laughs> uh, so and it took we, some retrieving. We hope you have had a busy two weeks as well. We're going to say cheers for the moment. Cheers, guys. What a year so far. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to 2020. Is it just, it's, it was just spooling, but it's not anymore. It shouldn't be. You should be all right now, Andy. You should join us. Hi, hello there, Nadine. And pleased uh, that you were able to join us too. Yes. Uh, so, what have we been up to the last two weeks? Well, it's been full of busy. Yeah, that would be, that would probably help on that one, yeah. You need to switch it over to the... You keep them entertained. Okay. So, um... I shall update this. <laughs> it's been a crazy two weeks here at the Q Corner Central. It's been busy in the shop. Um, January is generally a quieter time for us. So what we try to do is we plan the back end of the year when it gets crazy busy, right? And we plan up loads of projects that we've been wanting to do across the year. And we... we tend to put them into place brand new into January. And I'm sure a lot of people have been exactly the same as us that playing it that way the thing is um is oh if you do that it's going to come up in there so um the the plan was to get all those projects in motion however what happened on that one was the shop was busier than we expected so it's kind of pushed everything back it's cash 22 though isn't it you it can't is. win yeah you want to get stuff done but then Customers, yeah, yay! What, what can we say on there? But it's, uh, yeah, there is nothing on there. Oh no! There you well, go. There's our now. chat there in the background. Go. Hi. <laughs> there we go. It was all there. Right. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> so uh, yes, it's it's kind of like that again, isn't it? Um, we try to get all these projects done with the best laid plans of everything. Is that the must do's, want to do's, really would like to do's, but. Uh, you know what? They keep getting pumped down that list. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, but next week we've got, uh, uh, like Kieran said, we've got an, an even busier week <laughs> next week. I don't know what you mean, sir. <laughs> so, uh, what Kieran's saying on the chat there is that uh, we're actually at Spring Fair next week in Birmingham in the UK. Yay! For the biggest okay. trade show in Europe. Yes, we are. It actually runs from the Sunday all the way through to the Thursday. We shall be participating there on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, we'll turn up on Monday usually, yeah. so if you see us around, grab us and we have a chat. We um, always make an attempt to have a look around the show ourselves, because the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we are busy, busy, busy. However, yeah. it seems the earlier we go, we just can't leave that pioneer stand. Well, it's wait, too the thing good. is as well, is that usually it's the first time that we've had the opportunity mm -hmm. of seeing the newest products as well. So... Yeah. Um, that's what we get to do is we get sucked in by the fantastic uh, windows that Subola might have done. And I'm the, looking forward to them this year. Yeah, and Once the, the decor, because the decor's all been done by Fiona Fisher, Alberto Falcone, and Federico Anita. Um, and obviously the Pioneer team as well, the Pioneer Europe team. So we can't, we always get sucked in by that because you kind of go, wow, how have they used the balloons this time? Um, and it blows so our many, mind. There's so many new great balloons this year again. Uh, it just mind boggles as to what's going to be created. I saw some little sneak peeks of bits and pieces. Uh, saw some stuff from the Nuremberg from Luke Patron there yep. and the team. Some there's Sue. Hi, Sue. Hey Sue! Sue, uh, we, we didn't expect you to be joining us tonight. We thought you'd be far too b busy with Win all the preparations. Window display prep. <laughs> Absolutely. We can't wait to see those window displays. No pressure. So what we'll do is, um, the thing is, is that Sue always shares a lot to do with window displays on her blog. Um, yeah. But what we'll do is we'll take a few photos and we'll share them with you guys. And we, if you uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, um, you will see uh, that we'll go live from... Yeah, they're probably just go live on the Monday. I mean, they, they, they for us are the inspiration for the beginning of the year. That, that's what our windows are 
I said, done from, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Thanks, Sue. Yeah, exactly. She said there that she's actually working as we speak. They're working on the window displays. Can't wait to see them, what um, Sue has come up with this year. Uh, but there was something else that was launched a couple of days ago. It was. Well, three days ago, I think it was now. Yes. Um, I think and the hint's behind us. Yes, might be, might be. <laughs> Get the facts. Yes. Uh, the thing is, we haven't, we had a quick look at it, but we didn't have a... A fantastic look at it we didn't have an in-depth look at it the reason being is that we thought we would save it mm. and we would look at it together um, yeah. because I don't know about you guys but, but this is the only time we get to sit down that's not quite what I was gonna say but it's kind of been true today um, I don't know about you guys however um, we get a lot of questions from the environmentalists at the moment and then also we get we seem to be getting a lot more pressure from anti-balloon lobby groups hmm. and, and also now, just general customers from questions who are kind of hearing things being said and they're just the need there's a lot a bit of more false information. information yeah yeah misinformation that's being given out on social media i mean who knew that everything that you read on social media is not true right <gasps> who knew no. this yeah it's crazy um what do they call it Fake news. That's it. Fake, fake news. news. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation out there on social media, and people are, um, are spreading it all over. And it could potentially, uh, I, I didn't want to mention the group, Mark, but well done. Um, <laughs> Who knew? But potentially, the thing is, our information's being spread, and social media gets hold of things, and of course, it's sensationalized, um, and it blows things out of proportion. Pardon the pun. But um. Yes. So, um, what's happened is there's a lot of groups and individuals and companies that have come together to create. They've said enough. Enough's enough. Let's create. Because we've had some resources already. We've had the good campaigns. The you know the pop it and bin it. We've had the um, pin it and bin it. Pin it and bin it. Pin it and bin it. That's it. Pop it and bin it. Not quite um, as catchy. No. And um, we've got the. Um, Information from the European Balloon Council. We've got uh, what's the other one? The Balloon Council of America. Yeah, and then we've got PIBA, uh, PIBA as well. Yeah, the... You know, lots of great uh, organisations with lots of positive, proactive uh, activities to, to help us bring our profile up within the the, the business. Um, but this particular one is great because it's that resource of factual information that's all in one spot. It's great for us to use, our customers to use, send it to businesses. Um, it's got a lot in there. As Keith said, we haven't drilled down into it. That's what we're going to do now because there was so much good stuff on there. We thought, you know what? People have to start using this because it really is something that yeah. is going to help defend our position to stay strong. You know, we've seen it again and again recently about where they're going to look to ban balloons, which is such a shame because it's normally based off misinformation it is it's this misinformation that it's the sensationalized yeah. media yeah is is causing the problem so um let's dive over onto there dom see if we can uh i'm not promising anything <laughs> is that fair <laughs> just just do it let's use the magic of television <laughs> no, 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 no. you know everybody's waiting there they want to see what's going on this on the on anticipation the of me pressing this button. just do it oh wow it worked. <laughs> you cut yourself off though, Dom. You need to move one way or the other. I think the other way. It's always the other there way. There we go. Oh. Uh, Sorry, we both stopped to read something. I know there. there. It's Andy's, like... Andy's there from um, Scotland. He's just Single done line comments, stuff. sir, because <laughs> that was War and Peace. It filled our screen. Yeah, okay. So, um, this is the website, which is um, balloonfacts. Balloonfacts.org. Balloon facts. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah. So if you put in balloon fact dot org, you will be um, you'll land on this site, and it's full of information. I've just realised that it's actually clipped the top of that. So um, I wonder if can you flip over to that other scene for the moment while I do something? That's one. Give to me. Yes. Where you in the preview between the the top? There we go. There we and go. And then it means that what I can do is I can do some work behind the scenes. Yeah, just to tidy this up to make it so you can see everything. It's um, I had a quick look on my phone as well at this earlier on, and it looks like a very um, mobile-friendly website as well. So it looks a well-built, robust website, which is good. Uh, hello, California, um, which is 
it, it's professional it looks smart it is something that customers because majority of people do access websites via the phone now that's you know the, the biggest um, market share if you like for web browsing is a mobile website so the yeah. fact that it's a responsive website and it works that way is great okay right here we're we good. go yeah. oh, you, want, oh, you want to do this twice now yeah, okay, okay here we go now you might be able to see it a lot better now. There we go. That. We can see where it says balloonfacts.org. So this site is not just for us as professionals, but it's also there for the public. Because you can see there the mission, it says, to be the go-to resource for research-based balloon information and to educate the public on using common sense tips when enjoying party balloons. And that's the thing, though, isn't it? We're getting it out to absolutely everybody now. To make sure that this information is not just within the business community it's absolutely everybody so um, it means that if you have a question from an environmentalist and you don't want to handle it or something and they're telling you one thing or, or whatever or if somebody's um, really pushing you on it you can say here's a website you can go and check it out and have a read for yourself because um, when I had a little flick through here before with the the facts that are actually in here are all cited from where the references come from which I think is really important because it's not, just, it's not just saying this is what we think. Yeah. It's kind of saying, actually, this is... It's got some substance to it. it. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing for me more so, uh, replying to customers about these particular issues is trying to phrase it in such a way that doesn't come across aggressive or, you know, the tone's misheard. Uh, I, I do struggle with articulating that information yeah. without sounding like a bit of a rant or a you, lecture. You, you don't want it to be a confrontation. It's not an argument yeah. that you want to have. Whereas it's... if you've got something that you can reference and send a link to and say, you know, hi, thanks for the question. That's great. Check out some of the information here. I'm sure I'll answer all your questions. Anything else, you know, come back to us. Let them go and read it there. It's got all that information in a very, you know, customer friendly, positive manner that has those resources and links in there as well so that, that for me is is great um, yeah absolutely somebody said there is that you don't want to make them feel stupid especially when it's a customer on that side you know you, you really don't want to and he's clearly you, got an email from me before then <laughs> uh, you don't want to make your customer feel stupid you want to just say oh look you know there was a lot of things on there that um, that I didn't realize as well and and actually let's we'll have a look through here in a minute and you'll find some things that I'm sure that uh, you guys you know some of you guys might not know um, but we can always learn right so um, let's have a little look through I mean one of the things right in the beginning it says uh, there five reasons to never release balloons right at the front it's saying you got that you got the band symbol there saying no balloon releases yeah so if you're talking to um, anybody that has an issue with balloon releases to start off with or any or balloons in the environment the first thing it's telling you is that we do not support balloon releases yes right? we still get questions now you know people want to do memorial releases um or celebration uh, event ones and it's a you know it's a challenge because you know we, we've signed up to people we've said that you know we're not going to do balloon releases uh, we've accepted that you know as an industry that that is the best move for us um, so we proactively stop that um, and there's a there's the question there's the challenge well I'd like to do this who's to say that I can't do it let's educate them let's tell them why we're not doing it and this is a really good resource and support material for us to use um, for them to to have a bit of a look at and we can show them in store you know it's it, it's something that we can pull from as well so they can see that it's it's more than just us they can't just go to any shop this is this is something that the industry has adopted so i think that's really good for us yeah and the thing is as well this is absolutely brand new you know it's only been launched three days ago so it's going to be improved as it moves along um but the thing is is that what we need is we need some momentum behind it so um what would be really good if you guys could go on to uh, facebook as well have a look for balloonfacts.org and like the page as well so it, that would be really good to show the support but we can have a little look on here. Um, I've just clicked on the five reasons to never release balloons. And you can see straight away on there, we can see there's a problem with uh, microfoil balloons, um, with uh, uh, mylar balloons, um, and electricity, right? So let's have a little look and see here. I mean, we're not gonna read through everything, right? It could take you a long time to do this, but 
let's just have a little look through because you should enjoy the balloons okay let's not release them because you should enjoy them ourselves because the intentional release of balloons could compromise the environment we all know that it's kind of littering right um, you can argue the facts about latex releases and um, and the biodegradability and this that and the other you can argue that all day but the end of the day is you know if if I was walking down the street and I ate a banana and I had the banana skin I still wouldn't throw it on the floor exactly it, it, it's it and I think most customers in the past had had never really thought of it that way yeah and I think when we talked to them in that tone of saying you know that eventually that's going to land somewhere that somebody perhaps doesn't want it then ah okay yeah okay that makes sense that totally makes sense so yeah we don't want to do that so what we're going to do is we practice the pin it and bin it um the great alternatives to mass balloon releases this is i mean that's quite a, an article there so we can have a little read through there at some point but again we're not going to go through everything we're just going to go through the highlights because foil balloons that are weighted can drift into power lines and create the risk of power outage, which is basically what happened with California, right? That's why California balloon laws came into being. So we don't want yeah. anything more than that. I and mean, we saw, you know, a few years ago, it wasn't foil balloons, but it was a, a cluster of latex balloons and they'd been released from some event and they'd gone round a power line. Now in the UK, our power line's pretty stable, but it just looked awful. It looked this these balloons they were there for weeks as yeah. well. They were and it's just a, a negative image that's linked to the balloon product. That these things are hanging and they look terrible and they're there for so long. It was it was really bad. So you yeah. know, if you can avoid things like that, that's good for us. And you can see there we've got another article, seven unexpected ways that balloons contribute to society. That's that's quite interesting. I haven't read that article myself. Um but Let's have a little look across the top as well on the articles. So if I'm going to click on articles, what do we got? Are balloons bad for the environment? Now, there's, there's some great stuff on here about the, the helium usage, I seem to remember, or is that... Yeah, because that's a question we get asked a lot about the fact that, you know, is helium going to run out? Are we using a, you know, a depleting resource? Are we taking it away from other industries that maybe are more important than the balloon industry? Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we know some of the facts, but trying to put that into a concise, factual comment that doesn't take forever and a day to talk to a customer about, we're finding this as a, as a, as a really positive move forward for the industry, that we've got some more tools in our, in our tool belt, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's in here, are balloons bad for the environment? So it says there, get the fact. So let's click on that and find out what's inside of there. So this is going to go balloon history. Oh, this is one of my in most interesting things. This is the one that I love when people say that balloons are plastic. Mm. Because it's saying there that, um, well, I think it, ca it carries on to say the rubber latex um, was done in the 1825. 1825, the first um, latex balloon was created. Um, Same year Keith started balloons. <laughs> <laughs> However, it, 1825, now plastic wasn't created until 1907 and it wasn't popular until the late 40s and the 50s. So when they say, when people say about balloons being plastic, that really kind of gets to me because it's like saying, oh, well, it, it, balloons were created, you know, almost 100 years prior to plastic. Yeah. Therefore, it seems a bit funny. Okay. Somebody saying on there as well... Um, it's really good site, something that we that needs to be built on over time. That's right. All professionals totally need to be educating themselves to counteract the negative publicity some groups are pushing. Could not agree with you more, Lee. Yeah. Absolutely. Are latex balloons bad for the environment? It's, here we go, produced from rubber trees, all the usual stuff that we already know. This is a good point as well as organic pigments as well. It's one of the reasons we choose Qualitex because it, that particular latex balloon is a natural product and it is used with natural pigments as well, because a lot of people jump to the conclusion, yes, okay, it's, the latex is natural, but it's all those chemicals that you've used to no. create those colours. It's not, it's natural pigments. Yeah, na yeah, natural pigments, and also as well, even the print that goes on the outside is a latex-based paint. Um, are foil balloons bad for the environment? Because this is where we go off, you know? It's like, mm. okay, that's enough about the latex ones. Yeah, we can argue um, the latex, we can, we can, we can the stand our corner. Ones. So this is interesting. It's in here, it's made from a metallized nylon. Foil balloons are not biodegradable. We know this, right? 
um, but they can be reused. And actually, if you read the back of all the Qualitex foils, it says about it being reusable. It can be refilled time and time again. Okay. So it's not a single-use plastic. It can be reused, and anybody that's run um, retail stores, they, I, I know that you'll have done the same thing as we do at times, which is we will re deflate some of our air-fill displays from in-store, and we'll put them away carefully, and we'll reuse them again the following year. Yeah, we've got a particularly high ceiling, uh, and we use the um, click-click magnet system to have air-filled festive decor from our ceiling yeah. and those have been used you know year we do refresh them because we want to change them up we might cycle them up they might not be up every year but we just move them around and it just means you get a bit more value for money uh, and it's also that pro environment because it isn't single use so um, that's that's really good for us and another comment there as well in the chat um, so many wonderful air filled designs from Qualitex absolutely right you know one of our key focuses this year at Spring Fair again is is air filled there are so many options there's so many different things there's new things coming out all the time to make it more profitable to be air filled so yes helium is a resource that is environmentally okay to use well, however we're going to go to that in a minute as logistically well. yeah. and money wise it, it's been a bit expensive recently as most people will be very sensitive to <laughs> Um, and I know we've switched out lots of our designs to be more air filled and our customers respond and great to that. Absolutely. We also offer a refill service within our store. So it means that customers take them away and once they've gone down a while, if they want them topped up we, for a charge, of course, um, we offer a refill service. So it is something that um, you can do um, to make a little bit more money from that those balloons. But I mean, you can go through all of this about the balloon releases ban for the, the environment helium filled balloons bad for the environment as well but there's a one here there's a there's an article here where it says are balloons using up the world's helium now this is the thing isn't it them mri scanners and various uh, yeah. um, use they use a lot of helium on creating um i think it's microchips and um all sorts because the the, the, the temperatures, helium's the has the, the lowest cooling. freezing point yeah. of any element. When um, a scientist, as you can clearly tell. <laughs> yeah, um, but we always have this thing, it's like, oh, don't use helium in party balloons because I need my MRI scanner. So let's have a look at this. Well, talking about that, a, a while back, we even had some a, a, another balloon shop that we know, they were ordering their gas from their current supplier this is a mainstream supplier this is someone who should know better but they were telling them that they were not going to get their helium that month mm -hmm. because they needed to prioritize the helium for their medical side so the MRI scanners could get it before them so let's have a look are balloons using up the world's helium this honestly this website is fantastic um, so let's have a look the second most abundant element in the universe Ooh. Helium was discovered on the sun before it was found on the earth. So is there an abundance or shortage? Now, you can read through every bit, okay? And we could go through every single line. It's hard not to because it is really interesting some of this. So we don't want yeah. to sit here and lecture you with all this content. But um, but it says here, helium is more complex than people most people realise. And it's not just for party balloons. Helium has many different uses from cooling MRI machines, manufacturing semiconductor chips, chips, I didn't know this one. Finding this leaks new. in See, ships. See, you talk about something new. Finding leaks in ships. I never. I didn't realise they used helium for that. To find vegetables in a ship. <laughs> Not that kind of leak. <laughs> Breathing mixtures for divers. I knew that one. And many others, which is a clickable link there, I'm sure. That stuff that you never knew. Um, but there we go. Most global helium use of 85% is for things other than balloon inflation. Okay. Um, and also as well as the different purity grades of helium are required for many of these different applications um, design, designated in the lifting category of helium use balloons do, do not need the more expensive higher grade helium purity that medical scientific or technology applications require therefore helium qualified for medical need is never redirected for use in balloons yes and you think our helium is expensive Theirs is even more expensive. I mean, this stuff is brilliant. It's absolute. It's a gold mine resource here. Yeah, I mean, it's packed full of facts. They've even bullet pointed that as a kind of a key fact. Did you know helium used for balloon inflation can't be used in science or medical applications because of the impurities? 
Exactly. The, the gas that we're using is not something that can be used there. So we're not taking it from any resource. Nobody's doing without. And I think, to be fair, if we didn't use it, it'd probably just get wasted. Yeah, and then it would be probably more expensive for the medical and the te yeah. and technology because if we're not using that, it, uh, it, the, the impure stuff that comes out, the cost of taking the gas out, um, it's got to be going somewhere, right? But there's tons of stuff. Here's all the references regarding it. Um, the the what's not working at the moment as well, and I know Rob said this um, earlier in the chat, is the fact checker. It's coming soon. I would expect this to be re rather um, like really soon, rather yeah. than what you normally see coming soon on a website. I would expect this to be um, fairly quick because there's some um, there's some momentum behind it. Okay, yeah. so that 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 will be great. But there's a frequently asked questions. Everybody totally. likes a frequently asked questions, right? I like the colours they've used as well. You know, it's nice, very positive. It's very green. Poor environmental. Poor environmental. Well, green. Frequently asked questions. What is the California balloon law? If I don't live in California, do I need to abide by the California balloon law? Yeah, there's a there's a one, isn't it? That's the one that we most, always get. Most asked question when we're talking about. California balloon law because we do we do share this information on pretty much most training events that we do and we talk about the California balloon law in the fact that that's the the kind of the building blocks of where smart balloon practices came from which is something that we we really got behind and um, which is good for in industry information however this next step in stone the balloon facts is more customer focused information which i love yeah i mean it's got things in there what's the california balloon law if i don't live in california do children need to be supervised when around balloons that's an important one what is the most responsible way to dispose of balloons after my party um can helium be harmful if inhaled we know this right yeah don't do it don't do it it displaces the oxygen um in your body do all balloons have to be filled with helium no what are balloons made of there we go are balloons a single-use item? No, of course they're not. Um, they can be deflated and reinflated for the purpose of their original creation. Um, what was the best way to release balloons? Guys, can we ask you, what's the best way to release balloons? Of course, as it says there, there's no best way to release balloons. Exactly. Uh, how much weight is needed to hold down a balloon? This is interesting, isn't it? Um, it's got on there the weight that's required for latex balloons for foils and everything. Now, now this information is also available say, yeah. in the Qualitex catalog as well. Again, many questions get asked like this to us regular, but don't forget that Qualitex catalog, which is available online as well. You don't just need the, the physical one because it is in there on the online version. There is the capacity of gas, air or helium, for every single balloon that Qualitex manufacture and also the lift, the lift that it has. So if you want to do a calculation to say, I'm going to do a bouquet, what what weight do I need? You've got all the information in there as well. It's in the back of the catalogue. There's a big full list, one for latex, one for microfoil, and there's another little section now for uh, the bubble balloons. So you've got everything about float times, lift, and capacity as well. This is a nice general bit of information. Yeah, but for, for us in industry, there's a full and complete complete list in that catalog, in catalog. Um, there's another thing here does that this is another thing that comes up from time to time does the release of helium hurt the environment you know does it affect into the greenhouse gases mm. and things that's a good question yeah i think so. I, I thought it was a good one but it's basically saying it's an helium's an inert non-reactive non-combustible and non-toxic gas um and basically what it's saying is that the amount of helium in the atmosphere actually stays pretty constant most of the time because as it's a lighter than air gas it disappears into the upper atmosphere um and escapes into space so it, it kind of it self monitors itself yeah absolutely <laughs> self monitors itself but so, there's lots of yeah. uh... and then you've got all the citations which yeah. are down here which it's saying it's and these are not balloon guys yeah these are not balloon guys I don't think any of them are actually... You know what, it looks official enough to me, I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So have a look through them as well. They're, they're all cited there. Um, what else we got on here? Um, we've got the about. So what is Balloon Facts about? It's the mission, the missions to be the go-to 
source for research-based balloon information. It, yeah, we got that. Um, who are we? We're a collaboration of balloon and environmental advocates made up of individuals and companies who work with balloons, dedicated to providing research-driven information on balloon-related topics. It's that broad view. You know, it's not just from one one person saying this is what I what I believe to be true. It is a, a wide bit of information um, that's put as a collaboration so it really focuses and drills down to being correct and concise answers as well so um, we've loved it so far because we, we get these questions just like you guys all the time and it's trying to come up with that positive spin on something to make sure we're not yeah. bombarding them with this you know negative information yeah, you're not going, yeah. You're not, you, they you just want it in a nice little nutshell and say yeah that's a good question. Are they going to be available in different languages? Something we haven't checked, actually, to see if it translates. The thing is, is what would be a good idea to do is, um, just behind Dom's head over here, um, over there, <laughs> but here, um, is a small uh, section based on the um, Facebook profile for balloon facts so if you go on there and ask the question that would be a better place to do it because we don't have the answer because that's okay. a fantastic question we're not, this is not affiliated a UK with issue. them in any way this we is just not, um, yeah but this is not a UK or US or English based piece of information this is worldwide so I like that I, yes yeah, I just didn't see a translate feature on there yet I, I didn't as well but uh, um... it's not to say there isn't just uh, Oh, and there's a newsletter to sign up to. Ooh, there is. We, like we need to sign up to that, yeah. So you get your um, email on there and be the first to be in the know. Because when you know, you know. You know. So, um, where, what, obviously this is Balloon Facts, which has just come out a few days ago, but where else can we go to? Well, we have a couple of different things as well. We have the European Balloon and Party Council. Um, that's a really good source as well. So if you um, are... If you do do your balloons in the European areas, then that would be a good place for you to um, have a look. Um, also, we can go to PIBA. Now, PIBA started off in Australia, and this is the Australian site, uh, which is the Pro Environment Balloon Alliance. Yes. Um, they started off in Australia, like I said, but now they have branches around the world. In fact, uh, we're, our own store is part of PIBA. We're a PIBA One of the member. things I've liked about PIBA is you when you join you get the ability to download a certificate to say you're part of PIBA and we've actually used that as a reference point in our store we have it up pride of place it's in a frame it's on the wall and it's something we actually kind of refer to when we're talking about not doing balloon releases in fact just today um, I was asked to do a balloon release I was in the store asked asked to do mm -hmm. a balloon release and I could point to the the um, the poster that we have there saying that we're part of PIBA and uh, yeah, uh, and say it's that tangible thing that you can refer to to say we're part of this, and yeah. this is what, we, what 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 it stands for and why we do it. And it's just keeping that positive spin on it without again being that lecture. Uh, as Lee's point out there, yes, people have a UK Facebook page too as well. I believe that a US one. They've got yeah. various ones Original around the world. Ones. So check out for where you are. But you can join all of them. You can be part of all of them. It, we're all on the same mission. It's not a competition between each one to have you know no. the most members. It just we've all got the same goal uh, and sometimes a message from one is more suitable than the other in your particular situation but that balloon facts one that we're talking about today is excellent in the fact that it is very consumer based uh, and it's something that you can you know refer to and link to which i think is absolutely fantastic because i know that's something that um that i particularly struggle yeah. with um getting that information in the non-lecture <laughs> exactly you don't want to lecture anybody and then lastly as well, said i didn't want to lecture anyone but that's what it comes <laughs> you shouldn't <laughs> okay you shouldn't lecture anybody we've got the balloon council as well so this american based site uh, which is the balloon and you can go on there and again it's filled with loads of information for you guys depending on where you are in the world absolutely but um the, for me the best one if you're going to send a potential customer to have a little look around, um, this one, the balloonfacts.org, is a very friendly site. It's nice and clean, um, and it's it's the messages with... are very very straight to directed to a customer point, point of view. Of... Yeah, it, and it's not you know in, in industry chat. It's fine. The other sites are great for that, but this one is is absolutely fantastic. It's the first one that we've seen that really drills down and that's something that we could link to very safely for our customers with a question. Talk to them a little bit, 
give them the links and then you know give them that um, I think up. I think this on the front there there's five reasons to never release balloons I think this is very catchy as well because if you look on a lot of social media and um, you'll see a lot of things like five top tips for this or five reasons why you should never walk outside with an umbrella or something but lots give lots of four. things like that. <laughs> but, but yeah but Lots of things like this. It's very catchy. It's like five reasons. It I've got sounds, time to read. Yeah, five it sounds reasons. short enough yeah. that I'm I'm prepared to read that because it's only five reasons, and that gets you started. And I think once they start reading five reasons, they'll be in for more. Yes, because they'll find out and they go, ah, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize this, and it kind of pulls you in, which is the the whole idea of it, right? And I think to be honest as well, most most of our customers, if we were to refer them to this and they start to read through it, I think to be honest, they wouldn't read it all. They just see. This is solid. This is professional. And obviously, as a it's business, LinkedIn. we care about the environment, yeah. right? Because that's that, at the end of the day, you know, we've only got one world, so we, we've got to look after it for our future generations. And we also, we only have one balloon industry. So we want to look after that for future generations too. Yeah, so we take things seriously and we want to look after it for, um, for our kids and grandkids and, and everything else. Yes, but what we need to look after more well, is our friend. Is our friend, yes, because um, we have almost run out of time, but we can't, we, st we can't finish without doing one more thing. We can't. And for those that watch uh, us every two weeks, uh, you'll know exactly where it is, and uh, we'll you'll see you on the, on the other side. Okay, so here we go. And here we are. That's right, Mr. Q. Yeah, we didn't forget. We uh -huh. did not forget. Yeah. Yeah. We have him here, Mr. Q. Spin a winner. So you've got to be in it to win it, guys. And uh, I have to add the Mr. Q. Spin a winner to my um, everyday soundtrack. <laughs> I think. Is it your driving playlist? Is, it? Yeah. is that what it's going to be? I think that's what I need. Okay, so we have Mr. Q Spinner winner, and uh, we hope you enjoyed a bit on balloonfacts.org um, as well. Please um, send us messages and comments um, about what you liked about it, or also as well as that, get on to Facebook and send them a message and say how much you appreciate it because uh, we really appreciate that website as a resource. Yes. And don't forget, anyone travelling to Nuremberg, say hi to the Pioneer team. Yes. Anyone travelling to the Birmingham NEC, don't forget to say hi to the guys there. And if you're coming Monday afternoon onwards, say hi to us. We shall be on the stand most of the time. Yes, and also we have stage demonstrations. There'll be stage demonstrations by, excuse me, Mr. Alberto Falcone, Federico Oneida, Sue Bola, uh, Dominic, and myself over the week. Some very different stage demonstrations this year as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. good and some exciting things that we haven't seen before as well by different people. So we're looking forward to some of that. So let's get on with this though. So I we have uh, Mr. Q Spinner winner. We need a question. And our question is, what website is the go-to source for research-based balloon information? If you get this wrong, there's gonna, there might be some slappages. We might actually ban you from watching the show if you guys get this wrong. Because which... I will be extremely disappointed. <laughs> what website is the go-to source for research-based balloon information? So we're going to give you a Q corner minute. It's like a normal minute, <laughs> but, but flexible. it's a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, a little bit more relaxed. So we need the full website. It's a full website that we're looking for. You don't need the www. No, but we do need the website. So uh, what website is the go-to source for research-based balloon information? Question mark. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> we've got on here some cool oh, yeah. stuff but why we talk about it well we're actually talking about this inflator the other day yes yes however i saw a sneak Foil peek pull. of another inflator coming out oh yes the, the smart inflator the yeah the one that for the twisters right yeah. it's battery powered and everything from premium battery powered from, smart inflator yeah, from our nice. friends of premium balloon accessories we've got to get one of them uh, got, i tell you what we're going to do we're going to make a mission to get one on the show so that we can test it out I, for you I, guys. I saw Sue. Sue was using one. I'm gonna you distract her. <laughs> and I, yeah, yeah, and then you run, right? Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, that's how it's done. So yeah, that looked pretty cool for this year. That was nice. 
Oh, it seems what? It's awesome. Yes, it looked awesome. Yeah, we looked. We thought it looked awesome as well. Hey Sue, are you going to have that at the Spring Fair? If you are, thumbs up. Yeah, we'd like to know. If She's be saying now, no, <laughs> <laughs> no trust. <laughs> No, trust me, no. What, what's Martin Fader? <laughs> yes! Okay, oh, so if you are going to the Spring Fair, you'll see it there. Um, we'll have yeah. to catch you and do a little uh, little live video in use at the Spring Fair, Birmingham NEC 2020, The Smart Inflator. The Smart Inflator, yeah. So, come on guys, we'll have a few more the, answers than that. But boys, we like what gadgets, websites? what can I say? What website must... I like that other Qualtech site too. I'll give you a clue, you'll have to do a space after the dot, otherwise it won't let you do it, I think. I think we kind of messed up a little bit here as well, because I'm fairly sure that it doesn't like you... Using website using URLs, URLs in the, the URLs. YouTube chat. I'm, I'm going to test that as well. I'm going to do something. I'm we'll extend the queue corner minute, yeah, as we often do. This. We're just testing that theory now, because it might automatically be logged. <laughs> Nothing like giving them a hint, Mr. Sturman. <laughs> but it didn't come up. Ah. That's the problem. Greetings to you. Oh, no, it's there. Really it's there on there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is on there, but it's not on there. Keith has just entered the competition. <laughs> if I win, if I win, I'm going to spin it and I'm going to win the top prize. No, no. Guys. If he wins, I'll spin it. And I'm going to win the top prize, guys. No. That's really good. No. Statistically, you won't. Also, the very best balloon blog, of course. <laughs> nice. A nice. Touch. Who put that? Right. Uh, we're finished. We're going to count down. Smart people Anybody else want to put that today. website in? We've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Three and a bit. Two. One bit. One. And zero. That's it. We shall cut it out for you. So, let's have a look. Are you going to do the randomizer? Randomizer. Okay, guys, here we go. Good luck to anybody. We shall press it down. And we get have... my spinning hands ready because I'm excited. There we go. It's Balloon Melissa. Facts. Melissa Shark. I want to say shark. It's not, but shark sure. sounds cool. Congratulations, <laughs> Melissa. You're our Yay. winner. So, Melissa, you have a choice to make now. Is it going to be myself or is it going to be Dominic that um, spins it for you? Profile image, well done. Yeah, is it going to be me or is it going to be Dom? Your, your choose. Me or Dom? Tell us, Melissa. She was wanting to see on the screen. She wasn't going. Yeah, is it is going to be me or Dom. <laughs> just currently celebrating and jumping up and down and popping the champagne open. <laughs> but whilst you're doing that, if you could just put it down for one moment and pick who you'd like to spin. Pick. Come on, otherwise we have to decide for you. Pick me. Bartos is currently at the Nuremberg Fair as well. So um, I bet you're having a fantastic time over there. We looked at some of the balloon decor on the Qualitech stand. Looks fantastic. I'm sure it's the biggest stand as well this year. Yeah. yeah. Love the tree. Even Love bigger. Look at it. Okay. Right. Melissa, come on. Is it going to be me? Is it going to be K or D for D. spinning this? D or D. Quick. D or D. Otherwise, we do a paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. It's the only way. It's the only way to be safe, right? Is that the official Q the corner? Official Q corner. <laughs> Q corner. Okay. Mr. Q, spin a winner. How to pick somebody on to spin the winner or win the spinner? Okay, let's do this. We're gonna do the. We're gonna do. The, we're gonna do rock paper scissors. Oh no! No, I hate this now. <gasps> There's choice of three. <laughs> what? Okay, ready. This is how everyone spends their evening watch us do rock paper scissors. <laughs> yeah, guess so. I'm home. I'm stalling. Home. I know. Picks. Right. Okay. Yeah, we could Melissa, go there. you haven't decided, so that means we have to do this. We, we could yeah. do the New York Toy Fair. Yeah, Q Corner does New York Toy Fair. That'd yeah. be fine. I think... 
<laughs> that would work. Right. Okay. Ready? No. <laughs> Come on. Oh, watch it. No. Okay. Right. Oops. You have any? <laughs> you could have just said at that point. Never mind. So you had the same length right, as my name. It. So here we go. Ready? Ready? No. Three. No, you got rock, oh. paper, scissors, and then okay. Okay. rock, One, paper, two, scissors. Ah! Oh. Scissors. Scissors. <laughs> Man. There we go. Okay, two oh, minutes. For a I'm second. doing it for you. Okay, one Listen, second. Good look. She no, went no, for no. a second. She went for a second. One more than a second. Okay, we're gonna do this spin. Uh, good good luck. Let's see if we can win you something nice. Okay, here we go. Ready and here we go. <laughs> it's around and around it goes, and it's slowing down. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, it's a uh... oh. Number 11! Way! Slightly used Keith's Sturman's socks. <laughs> Melissa, if you send us a message with your address details, we'll send them straight out to you. Brand new ones, though. Look at that, though. You were so close. I thought you were going to win the oh, bag I saw that. there from Click Click. You were so close. I thought it was the mug he was yeah. getting excited about. No, it was the Ooh. Mag Mover Pole. You almost won the Mag Mover Pole. Hard lines. Uh, you won uh, a pair of socks. So we'll get some of them out to you. Uh, that's I like good socks that you like too. socks. Yeah. Handy, wanna, that's what you've won. I need somebody to win the mystery box. Because, I, A, I want to remember what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that we have stuff in there from a Relia drop. Things from Balloon Dog Apparel. Alberto Falcone t-shirt. Premium balloon accessories. Uh, foil Pro. Trusty Qualitex keyring. And socks. And a Q Corner t-shirt. Mystery box. And also a Mr. Q Plush on there. But you won the socks. Congratulations. You did. And now uh, it's time for us to go. We've got to go home now and make dinner. This is so very true. Hope that we see you next week at Spring Fair. Yes, but thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye bye for now.